Yeah, ethical non-monogamy, ENM, the practice of taking part in romantic relationships that are not completely exclusive yeah, okay. between two people. I uh, have also, I've had friends, uh, female friends, ask me if I'd be into, um, what is it called? Ethical co-parenting or something okay. like that? Yeah. Basically like, hey, I'm still single and I don't have a kid. Ben, do you want to have a kid with me? <laughs> like, what What movie is that? I don't know. What fucking movie is that? It's not knocked up. It's the I'm pretty sure it's the guy in you know what? I'm not even gonna try and do this because it's gonna be embarrassing. But it is a movie. That's a plot of a movie that exists. And uh they seem like they had a they had a good time. Honestly. Where they just decided, hey, we're gonna have a kid as friends. Yeah. Huh. That sounds fun. Yeah. I still don't know if I want a kid. Really? Yeah. With my most recent ex, it was a point of contention. Because she wanted kids and you didn't? No, she didn't. She said she didn't. And, and you did? Yeah. And I was... But you just said you're not sure. Well, I I mean, it changes. And last summer, I was thinking, I definitely want a kid. I definitely want one. And I brought it up as like, a, hey, maybe... maybe um, And I do this. I tend to do this. If, if I haven't thought out a feeling... I will just talk it out stream of consciousness style. And for her, it could be upsetting. And I guess it was because I was like, yeah, maybe I want to, maybe I need to be with someone who wants a kid. <laughs> it was like, ay, ay, ay. Because, yeah. Is this the most recent one? Uh huh. Oh, so this is the reason why you didn't work out? No, 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 no. That's not why. But uh, yeah, she was like, why, um, what if you end up with someone who also wants kids, but then they can't have them? Like, what are you going to do then? Leave that person and go find someone who can have them? And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. But, uh, yeah, I still, I still, um, I'm on the fence. There's entire subreddits. I think there's one called On the Fence about people just like that who mm. aren't sure. And there's one called Regretful Parents. Oh, <laughs> no. Just, really? Yeah. They just, like, hate their kids? They fucking, they're, I've seen guys who are just, like, Dude. their whole... Their whole yeah. Here's no, oh fence to, fence. Sitter. Go to regretful. I don't, yeah, regretful. I want to. There was one guy who just said. Uh, I remember him saying like, "I wake up every day and hate my life. I hate my children." And he's got like three of them. Um, what? Yeah. Well, it's searched by like the the top of all time. I wonder what it is. You don't want to believe that this exists, especially yeah. when you're like about to actually have a kid. Sure. Like not like, I'm not saying we're like pregnant or anything, but no. I'm just saying like I definitely want to have a kid soon. Yeah. And, but you want, like, you know, you're still, I feel like everyone is sort of a fence sitter in this phase where it's yeah. like, oh, maybe not now. Maybe, you know, you're still kind of like kind of hanging on to your independence a little bit, even though you're like starting to be like, no, I got to live for, for someone else yeah. at this point. But um, <laughs> you want to believe that, you know, there is that, like immediately that magic yeah. is like what you hear from every single parent where it's like, I would trade everything just for this yeah. because it's like... It's a magic you'll never know. And, you know, everything you hear from parents. And then you read stuff like this, and you're like, fuck, there's a chance that this could happen. Yeah. My dad, when I was, um, I think I might have talked about this on on Trillionaire, but uh, my dad, when I was a year old, wrote hand wrote me a letter for future me. And uh, I opened it after he died. And it was like four pages, four or five pages long. And it was very interesting because he was around my age now writing this to to baby me saying how much he just was like in love with being a parent loved me you know couldn't wait for me to get older so we could be buddies and sent me this whole time capsule like gas receipt uh grocery store receipt um what was playing in the movie theaters that week uh you know all sorts of shit and I still have it and you know once every couple of years I pop it out and look at it and read it and that kind of nice. thing yeah, that kind of I I share his enthusiasm for yeah, wanting to be a dad. So pro tip for anybody who is uh, expecting a kid or thinking about it, definitely do something like that. R handwrite yeah. your kid, your future kid a letter cuz man, that's, that's awesome. It it's a, a really really special thing. Me Kel uh Kelsey and I were like f filming like you know, some some like small stuff at our wedding and stuff like that for our mm -hmm. future kids. That's fucking cool, man. I love that. One time I got high, and uh, I was by myself. This is when I was in my early twenties, and I was at home, and uh, 
I was just like, you know what? I'm going to write a letter to my future kid. And I started writing it, and then I like trailed off and got distracted, and I found it years <laughs> later. It, say? it just was like, dear future son or daughter, if you are not my future son or daughter, fuck you. This isn't for you. <laughs> Stop reading. And then it was like, yeah, this is just who I am. Like, blah, blah, blah. It, was, it was fucking stupid and embarrassing. <laughs> Anyway. I gotta tell you about this fucking Volvo that I own. All right, <laughs> this fucking thing. This, I'm I left so the keys in, in love it. with this Volvo. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the, look, look at this one. Husband finally admitted to baby trapping me. Jesus Christ. Wait, what? A, keep, keep scrolling. Let's see. I want to see a couple others here. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, that's not juicy enough. Fuck autism. Not juicy enough. Uh, oh, this is this is interesting. Why I discourage parenting in ten bullet points? Let's see this. Number one, it is expensive. Number two, stress is out of this world. It never ends until you die. Did I mention the cost? <laughs> you used to just work. Now you do school runs and medical appointments on top of work. You and your spouse may fall out of love and no longer want to be together. Well, those little bundles of joy will not make life any easier splitting up. Oh, God. Yeah, your kids may develop any number of problems. Enjoy their surly teenager years. Loudmouth friends and partners. I, it's hard, you know. It's sure. hard for us There's, to comment because we're not in this situation at all. But you have to, you have to think somewhere in the back of your mind, like it'll get better, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe not. I mean, maybe if you have a child, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I think, but like you have to think, like at some point they're gonna be adults. They're gonna be making their own money. And yes. At that point, it's like, yeah, sure. Maybe you like regret fifteen or eighteen years of your life or whatever. But like. <laughs> Maybe you'll be best friends with them. Maybe they'll grow up to be a fucking rock star and they'll buy you a house. Right. For me, the risk is the pain of losing them to sickness or death yeah. or anything. But one thing that I've learned learned in my uh, romantic endeavors, avoiding love and avoiding the closeness of a relationship just because of your fear of eventually losing them is no way to live life. Yeah. Oh, course. they might die. They might leave me. Like, okay, so you deprive yourself of that experience to begin with? Yeah, yeah, of course. Just so you don't have to deal with that that fallout? Yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, you're living scared. That's not the way to go. Yeah. And I, I did that in my late 20s and early 30s and was like, ugh, this person could fucking get sick and die or I could die and it would devastate them. Better, better better keep one foot out the door just in case. Yeah, yeah. Better, is that your reservation right now? Is that why you're No, no, not at all. I've grown out of that. I've I've embraced it and been like, okay, you know what? It's all about leaning into it and embracing that vulnerability and uh really giving yourself to to another person and relishing in that for as long as the universe grants it to you. Cause yeah, you could wake up dead tomorrow or you could live to well, be you're not gonna wake up dead. No, I know. Yeah. It's an old Simpsons yeah, joke. No, Homer says it to Bart. It's yeah. so great. Yeah, you could wake up dead tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you you never know what's going to happen, so you might as well enjoy what you got while you've got it. Um, but yeah, it, uh, I I definitely am, I'm of the attitude of fully leaning in now and just give it to me. That's good. And then it sucks, you know, when it, when shit does happen and <laughs> you get fucking really Yeah, but that's life. Heartbroken. Yeah, that's sad. Did you guys have I feel like the older I get, the more I'm just like, oh no, this is the point of life. Yeah. Yeah, totally. What else is there? To travel? Yeah, it's like to travel and eat good food with your spouse? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There are yes. those things too. But What? Know, what I was just saying there is another side of like if you know, you live. No, I know there's another side, and I just like I dis I just disagree with it. Like, like right now, as far like from my perspective, I'm like the. I don't know. The older I get, the more I'm like, okay, this is like I I, fe- I feel selfish. Like, hmm. continuing to con- just only be concerned about me. You know what I mean? I it's think it's kind of weird. I maybe mean, that's like just because I've started to like care for animals and stuff like that. I'm slowly learning. Like, oh no, there is this other really fulfilling part of life where it's like you give yourself to others. And I do still want to chase my dreams and stuff, but I feel like, and of course I'm in like a pretty privileged position where I do, you know, I can have the you know money to do stuff like that and sure. have help and stuff like that. But I do, I want to like, I just feel like I want to, you know, help, I don't know, like live for something else. Sure. It is the, uh, it's the ultimate, um, it's the ultimate marathon. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's the next big step, man. Yeah. You you do a, uh, you do an Iron Man, and you got to do the Iron Dad after that. Yeah. 
I mean, I think of, uh, have you ever seen Raising Arizona? Uh, no. You should watch, it's one of the best, it, it, it's the Coen Brothers. It's okay. one of their first movies. It's a young Nicolas Cage, and it's so fun. It's about this couple who can't, the, the woman is barren, and she can't have a kid, and um, they they kidnap a child and wow. and a baby. Nicholas Cage. Yeah, they kidnap a baby, and at the very end, there's this like dream sequence where they're they're an old couple, and they all they want is to start a big family and have kids and have grandkids and stuff. And uh, at the very end, um, they've there's it's like a dream sequence where they've somehow managed to overcome nature and have a big family and it's just really sweet because they got their kids and grandkids all around the like dinner table and stuff and that seems nice 